We are on Knowledge 6, Lesson 9, The Solar System, Part 2. Our first vocabulary word is debris. Say debris. Debris is scattered pieces of remains. The next word is probes. Say probes. These are tools for exploring things that cannot be easily seen. The next word is violent. Say violent. Violent means dangerously rough. In the last read aloud, you learned about the four inner planets of our solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Now you will learn about the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, as well as the famous dwarf planet, Pluto. The first important difference between the inner planets and the outer planets is that the inner planets are all made up of rocks and metal, whereas the outer planets are made of different types of gases. The planet Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun. In Roman mythology, Jupiter was the king of the gods, the strongest and most powerful of all. The largest planet in our solar system is named after him. Jupiter is so big that you could stuff about 1,300 planet Earths inside of it. It takes Jupiter nearly 12 Earth years to make one revolution around the sun. However, Jupiter rotates on its axes faster than any other planet in the solar system. This massive planet rotates all the way around on its axes in less than 10 hours. Jupiter is made mostly of hydrogen and other gases. Because of its fast rotation and the mixing of its gases, Jupiter is an extremely violent, stormy place. The best known feature on Jupiter is its large red spot. This spot is actually a massive storm. This storm is so big that you could fit three planet Earths inside of it. Jupiter can be seen with the naked eye from Earth, and sometimes you can see its red spot with an ordinary telescope. There are at least 63 moons in orbit around Jupiter. Most of them are very small. However, four of these moons are well known. They were all discovered first by the famous astronomer Galileo. These are easily visible with a pair of binoculars. Each is interesting in its own way, particularly Europa, the small one in the upper right. Europa is slightly smaller than our own moon, and yet for many astronomers, it is one of the most fascinating celestial bodies in the solar system. Europa's surface is covered in ice, and its atmosphere contains a lot of oxygen. Many astronomers believe that beneath Europa's ice, there is an ocean of liquid water. This means that maybe, just maybe, there is some form of life on this distant little moon. The next planet in our solar system is Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun. It is the second largest planet in the solar system. Although it is much smaller than Jupiter, Saturn is famous for its rings. It is not the only planet with rings, but no other planet has rings like Saturn's. This incredible photo was taken by an unmanned orbiter in 2004. Saturn has several layers with different types of clouds, and it is quite stormy, though not as stormy as its neighbor, Jupiter. Because it is so far from the sun, it takes Saturn nearly 30 Earth years to make one complete orbit. Different parts of Saturn rotate at different speeds, but for the most part, Saturn rotates on its axes very quickly, taking a little over 10 hours to complete one rotation. The rings of Saturn are always moving around the planet. They are made up mainly of ice and a few other types of materials. The rings are basically huge collections of dust with some larger chunks here and there. Nobody is sure how the rings got there. Some astronomers believe the rings formed when one of Saturn's moons exploded and the debris or broken pieces became trapped in orbit. Others say the material in the ring is, is left over from the time when Saturn was formed billions of years ago. You can see Saturn from Earth during certain times of our year, and with an ordinary telescope, you can see the rings. The seventh planet, Uranus, has the coldest atmosphere of any planet in the solar system. Because it is so far from the sun, it takes Uranus 84 Earth years to make one complete orbit. It is mostly made up of hydrogen, but its atmosphere also contains a lot of ice and other substances not found on Jupiter or Saturn. Uranus is named after a Greek god of the sky, making it the only planet other than Earth that is not named after a Roman god. 
Although it is possible to see Uranus from Earth with the naked eye, you really have to know where and when to look for it because it appears very dim or not very bright from here on Earth. Uranus has one very special characteristic. It rotates on its side. You can't see it in this image, but in comparison to Earth and the other planets, its axis is sideways, as though someone turned the planet on its side. The planet Neptune is the eighth and final major planet in the solar system. In Roman mythology, Neptune was the god of the sea, so this is a fitting name given the planet's beautiful blue color. Astronomers still do not know exactly why Neptune is blue, and it probably will be a while before they figure it out. That is because Neptune is nearly 3 billion miles from the sun, making it very difficult and expensive to send unmanned probes to explore it. It takes Neptune nearly 165 Earth years to orbit the sun. The planet is never visible to the naked eye from Earth, and you will need a very powerful telescope to get a good view of its beautiful color. Not so very long ago, students in school were taught there were nine planets in the solar system, including Pluto. In fact, ever since Pluto was discovered in 1930, it has been considered a planet. However, in 2006, astronomers decided to categorize Pluto as a dwarf planet, one of several such bodies in our solar system. In Roman mythology, Pluto was the god of the underworld, a dark and dreary place. This is a good name for such a cold and distant dwarf planet. Pluto is about 4 billion miles from the sun, so it is extremely cold and dark out there. The planet is made almost entirely of frozen nitrogen. Most nitrogen found on the Earth is a gas, but out in the depths of space, it is frozen. It takes Pluto about 243 Earth years to orbit the sun. We have a lot to learn about Pluto and other celestial bodies in the outer reaches of the solar system, but it is not easy to explore this area. For now, this is about the best photo we have of Pluto, and it was taken from 3 billion miles away by a special spacecraft called the Hubble Space Telescope. So far, Pluto remains unexplored. A special probe was launched toward Pluto in the year 2003, but it will not reach the planet until 2015. The end. You may now go ahead and click on the Google form to answer the questions about today's read aloud.